in this video I'm going to talk about reactive oxygen species or ROS and how ROS is generated and what is the effect of ROS in our body especially the harmful effect of ROS so what are reactive oxygen species so as we know for our life oxygen is really important but this oxygen and some species of this oxygen could be very harmful one of such species of oxygen is reactive oxygen species or called ROS and ROS are actually chemically reactive molecules which have oxygen so these are chemically reactive molecules containing oxygen such ROS are peroxide superoxide and hydroxyl radical so we would discuss them step by step so here is a here is a oxygen and this oxygen once reduced by gaining one electron it would form a superoxide radical and superoxide radical is super duper dangerous so this is the basic structure of uh, oxygen molecule and after reduction it would gain one electron and it would form a reactive oxygen species as you can see this is the stable structure of the oxygen molecule but when it gains an extra electron it is unstable so in order to gain stability it would try to donate the electron to others and make other molecule reactive so in this respect this oxygen uh, plus one electron which is actually superoxide radical is very dangerous other super other uh, such uh, reactive oxygen species are hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is not as dangerous as superoxide radical but still it has a lot of harmful effect apart from hydrogen peroxide another super duper dangerous reactive oxygen species is hydroxyl radical and hydroxyl radical have plenty of harmful effects on our body and the enzymatic defense system which actually combat ROS cannot combat this hydrogen perox this uh, this hydroxyl radical so basically we need antioxidant to combat this hydrogen uh, this hydroxyl radical so ultimate ultimately what happens ultimately what happens our body converts most of these ROS into our non harmful state so if uh, the most harmful uh, species of ROS is superoxide superoxide getting converted to hydrogen peroxide then hydrogen peroxide could be formed to uh, could be formed to water or it could be uh, partially reduced to hydroxyl radical so hydroxyl radical is pretty harmful now we would see how ROS is generated and there are basically two sources of ROS generation one is exogenous and one is endogenous so let's first discuss the endogenous pathway of ROS generation so ROS is generated normally in our body during oxidative phosphorylation the complex 4 in complex 4 uh, the terminal electron acceptor is oxygen so oxygen accepts four electron and form two molecules of water now instead of accepting four electron if oxygen molecule accepts uh, one electron then it would convert it into a superoxide radical so during a normal process in our body some amount of ROS could be generated other steps like uh, during respiratory burst by macrophages ROS is also generated so let's say our body is invaded by a pathogen these red colored bacteria so our uh, macrophage and dendritic cell would take up those bacteria so inside the macrophage these bacteria have to be killed and these macrophages kill these bacteria by means of ROS so in that respect ROS is also generated and let's say we have a inflammatory sensation now during inflammation ROS is also generated so basically we have seen there mainly three type of ways how endogenous ROS could be generated let's see the exogenous pathway 
so the in exogenous pathway the by ionizing radiation such as uv radiation can damage our body and can produce a lot of ROS and UV radiation particularly have a lot of harmful effects on our body and we would discuss it later. Apart from UV radiation, tobacco smoke like drugs and genobiotics and uh, due to pollution, ROS could be also generated. Not only pollution, by application of pesticides, by application of pesticides and consuming a uh, uh, food uh, affected food and vegetables affected by pesticides ROS could be generated in our body one such example is rotenone which is actually a component of pesticide but it could generate ROS when it's consumed uh, when rotenone treated uh, plants are consumed so let's see what are the harmful effects of ROS in our body so ROS is very harmful and First harmful effect of ROS, first most harmful effect of ROS is lipid peroxidation. So here you can see a plasma membrane, a, plas a plasma membrane bilayer, a lipid bilayer. And here we have drawn a hydroxyl radical and hydroxyl radical has one electron extra. So it can, it want to gain stability and it can donate its electron to a nearby a uh, lipid molecule of the uh, bilayer, lipid bilayer, and then what happens? This particular lipid molecule get reactive, then it uh, transfers its electron to the nearby, and then a chain reaction kind of thing takes place. And as a result, uh, there is a potential damage in the cell membrane. So, and cell membrane is very important for functionality of the cell. Any damage in the cell membrane could cause osmolarity disbalance. And when there is a osmolarity disbalance, cell, there is a high chance that cell could be lysed. ROS could have harmful effect on proteins. ROS could attack proteins and ROS could actually oxidize, uh, ROS could actually reduce or oxidize particularly specific groups inside the protein. One such example is ROS could convert the sulfhydryl group into ROS could actually oxidize the sulfhydryl group of GAP DH an enzyme and a sulfhydryl group in GAP DH is really essential for the function of that particular enzyme and by uh, this action ROS is able to uh, uh, ROS is actually able to reduce the functionality of that particular enzyme. Not only enzymes, many signaling molecules, many other structural proteins like collagen, they are already harmed by these ROS. ROS can have potentially damaging effect on DNA. Like this hydroxyl radical, it could affect the DNA and it could cause a mutation. And if this mutation is not repaired or this uh, this uh, mutation is not repaired it, there is a chance that it could be and if this mutation is in the germ cell then it could be segregated to uh, next and next generation and which could be potentially harmful and it could be damaging and apart from that this dna damage could lead to apoptosis also so ROS mediated dna damage could ultimately lead to apoptosis Let's come to neurons. ROS could damage the myelin sheath of the neurons. As you can see in this neuron, the myelin sheath of the neuron is potentially damaged by the ROS. Thus, ROS can reduce the velocity of action potential transmission and thereby it could reduce and it could decrease the neuronal functionality. So when there is a, a increase of ROS, Neuro risk of neurodegeneration also increases and it is a highly uh, classified research topic in these days. Apart from neuron, ROS can also have damaging effect on mitochondria. If ROS actually uh, uh, cause damage into the mitochondrial membrane, then there is a chance that cytochrome C would be leaked out into the cytoplasm. And once cytochrome C is leaked into the cytoplasm, 
cytochrome C could activate APOF1 and other and this APOF1 cytochrome C complex can actually activate other caspases and there is a caspase cascade would go on and ultimate fate would be the cell death programmed cell death by apoptosis so here are some uh, harmful effect of ROS apart from these ROS is main um, ROS is a main cause of aging and ROS can cause multiple type of disease so in these days uh, these days a huge research on ROS is going on and scientists have identified that ROS could be the cause of many diseases so ROS and its harmful effect is really essential to study these days and that was all about ROS and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like my video please give it a quick thumbs up please share and don't forget to subscribe thank you